I did not expect to make this much progress in just two weeks of hitting gym consistently, bulking up, and to be honest, not even not even sleeping that well, not even maybe eating that well, not not even taking care of myself that well. And the progress that I have made is insane. So to all the people that say, oh, that is 80% training is almost nothing. Shut the fuck up. You literally do not know anything about fitness. And the reason why people stagnate, the, the reason why people hit the plateau is because they think exactly that. They think that training doesn't matter. They think that you can just show up, do, you know, just some basically workout at 40% of your maximum capacity and that's somehow fine. Yeah, you can make progress even if you're training at 40% of your capacity. But the thing is, you you need to train for like 15 years to see the progress that I've been getting in the last two years. So it's really not that worth it. So one word, two words basically, that will explain how did I get so much progress. I mean, it, it may not show, but it's like I've been getting huge. My lifts are getting up and up every single basically workout. I'm, I'm doing progressive overload, overload like a maniac. Uh, I've been able to only rep 160 kg on that lift last year on my peak bulk when I was like 7, 8 kg heavier. And now I could rep it again, even at this stage. Two words, Mike Menzer. You may have seen him, you know, popping up on social media, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, you know, all those kind of bodybuilders in this fitness industry, they're like using his program. And his ideal, his philosophy of training really resonated with me because, I, as you know, I trained six times per week less bulk uh, during the last winter. And I was, you know, doing PRs, I was smashing workouts, still doing progressive overload, but not making that many gains. Not really developing muscle mass and developing more fat because I thought that, you know, the more I eat, the more will I get. But that isn't necessarily the case. His approach to training is the less you do, the better and quality over quantity. I've been going to the gym three to four days per week, mostly four days, but I, I believe that I will maybe even switch up to three days. I do push on Monday, on Tuesday I do pull, on Thursday I do legs, and on the fourth day I do some chest and some back, and you know, one exercise for bicep, one exercise for uh, triceps. The reason for that is that because I believe that my chest is lacking and I need to focus more on chest, so I bench two times per week. But oh my god, with this approach, I'm getting so like such a good results, and the training is based around doing less, but doing it in a higher quality and higher intensity. This word intensity is so important if you want to develop muscle and not hit that plateau because I see so many people hitting that plateau and they're like, yeah, gym is fun, you know, you get some progress in the first six months, then it becomes you know, a pain in the ass, then you have to go to the gym two years just to get a little progress. I'm like, that's not the case. You're not training as intensely as you, poss as you could. You really are not. I was doing tricep extensions with 45 kg for more than one and a half years. And in the last two weeks, I've jumped from 45 to uh, 61. And I'm doing it for two sets of eight reps. Every single exercise other than compound movements is two sets of eight reps, really trying to push until failure. Really trying to find that like sweet spot of weight that I'm pulling, that on my second set, maybe I cannot even do eight reps. So first set, I will do eight reps. It will be really, really hard. That on the second one, if I can do six, that's okay. If I can do eight, that's amazing. 
Next time, up the weight. Add 2.5 kg on uh, 2.5 kg on whatever exercise you're doing. Then again, try and hit two sets of eight reps. Now, Mike Mentor philosophy is even more extreme. Like he, it, even more extreme. He he tells you to work out every four days, and to only go for one set until complete muscle failure, but with like two to three warm up sets. So it's basically like similar style stellar training because I don't really take those warm up sets. For example, if I do deadlift as my first compound moment of the day for pool day, and then I switch on to barbell rows, it's like, yeah, I can do, you know, lat pull downs as well. My, my back is already like working pretty well Then I can do maybe some pull ups or I don't know, lat pull down. My bicep, for example, has been used in every exercise that I've used for, for my back. You know, it's already like kind of fatigued. So I don't really see a point in me then doing three warm-up sets before I do one set to failure. I just do like two sets really, really hard. One for eight reps and the second one, if I can't do eight reps, it's fine. I will work, I will work my uh, uh, way up, basically, when it comes to this weight. But the training has been insane. You can even add some supersets, you know, just basically get a machine. Let's say uh, you have... I don't know, whatever machine basically you want. And just go until complete failure. I like to do that with bicep and tricep. So basically I would put a, I don't know, 50 kg on the tricep uh, extensions and then just pump up as much as, like as many reps as possible. It's really trying to like fatigue the muscle. Same thing with bicep, I would like load maybe, I don't know, 40, 35 kg on the bar and just do as many as I can. That's it. I fatigued my muscle. The second principle of his style of training is, you know, the second explanation of his uh, style of training is that you don't need to go to the gym six days per week and train three hours per day and really try to chase the pump. Your goal as a bodybuilder, even if, if you are not a professional bodybuilder and you go to the gym to try to build muscle, you're kind of a bodybuilder. Your goal as a bodybuilder is not to go to the gym and perform as many sets as possible. That would be a goal of someone who trains for endurance, trying to endure more, more pain, trying to endure more sets, more weight on his, on his uh, back. Your goal as a bodybuilder is to show up to the gym and basically do what is necessary to activate the muscle growth and to do what is necessary is to train intensely so you can damage the muscle and cause stress on that muscle and then head out of the gym go home eat rest sleep and let the muscle grow only that you don't need to perform 15 sets you don't need to perform you know, so many reps. That's for endurance training. That's for another thing. That you know, yeah, you can you can still do that. But your main priority as a bodybuilder is to activate the muscle growth, and you do that by training intensely, putting as much as intensity as you possibly can, really stressing the muscle. And what I noticed is that if you train that way, you know, really pushing to failure, really training hard, low, not many sets. Just focusing on intensity. Your muscles may be sore, okay, but your nervous system will be sore as well. After my leg day, I cannot do any focused work. I train my legs like a maniac, really pushing to failure. Two weeks ago was the first time that I really hit legs in a way that my bar literally fell uh, of, of my back for the first time ever I trained in that way really pushing to failure on squats so you can imagine the pain that I went through I was laying on the floor basically for like two to three minutes just to like it, it, it was it was so hard like I was doing squats and my hands started like twitching my back started like I started just twitching like I felt like my body will 
collapse like my body will basically disappear from this earth like I'll, I'll like basically like a Thanos snap his finger and my body was just disappearing that's how I felt when I was doing squats until failure imagine doing that on on every exercise now okay I'm guilty of this I'm not doing any everything to failure yet what I'm focusing more right now is on getting that progressive overload because it's still not even a month of me uh, going through a bulk and you know I have to sort out my sleep a little bit better I need to uh, sort of all of these different things I've been partying a lot in this uh, August basically I've been drinking a lot I've been sleeping less so this month is basically just to like get the momentum going but even in those two weeks of getting the momentum going I'm I've improved a lot my chest has improved significantly it was my lacking point it was it was my basically the worst point of my physique right now it's so good like i'm actually impressed by the way that my chest improved in the last two weeks and i've been using this uh method that i saw from a youtuber called uh, max taylor max taylor lifts but he says that like when you're doing rep try to like flex all the way fr from down here to up up there like at the point and then like trying to hold on so like try to flex all the way up and if you apply mike menser philosophy on just training with intensity i believe you have like the perfect formula to to grow and i'm growing rapidly without perfect sleep without perfect diet with partying and drinking and smoking so after I'm done with this shit, you know, and I really try and, uh, you know, put all my focus into just grinding, the progress will be insane. Even right now, it's like, I'm actually, I'm excited to go to the gym and really like try to like push to my limits. Isn't, isn't that training so much better than just doing pussy ass training of like, yeah, I'm lightweight. Try and push yourself. Try and see what you can become. Try and see how like, how much can you bench, how much can you deadlift, how much can you squat. Try and push yourself to the limits. Literally, how, how many times in the last two weeks was I doing some basic moment? Let's say I was doing a lat pull down, but for my biceps. So like you grab the bar, then you know, like squeeze the muscles, try to squeeze the bicep. And I was doing it with maybe like 50 kg. And then I just noticed, bro, that's so light. Let me go to 60 kg, 10 kg up. And I'm and I'm struggling. Like I'm literally, like literally, I cannot even pull it down properly. But I'm struggling and I'm getting that pump and I'm getting that muscle. Like I'm activating the muscle growth. I'm causing damage to the muscles. That type of training is so much better. And I'm actually excited to go to the gym. And I noticed that when you go to the gym for like three to four days, and especially have double rest days on Saturday and uh, Sunday, you just want to go to the gym more. When I was going six days per week, I was getting kind of like fed up with the gym a lot of times. You know, I don't want to go. Uh, it's... I'm tired, I don't want to go away, I have to go, you know, it's, you know, we go gym, you know, <laughs> why not? Right now it's like, yeah, like I want to go to the gym. I haven't been in like two to three days, let me go to the gym. Now, the second part, which isn't, which isn't like Mike Menser's philosophy involved, because at that time when he was alive, they didn't have technology, but you want to achieve mind-muscle connection. And I believe you achieve that through flow state and you achieve flow state through basically getting rid of some things. Few things I've been implementing in the last two weeks was uh, no phone in a gym, absolutely no phone in my sight. I leave it in my bag and I train without my phone. I don't look at my phone during training, even if I have to go to the P. Uh, and uh, going to my dressing room, I don't check my phone. When I'm done working out, I don't check my phone. I go straight to the shower. And if you're worried, like, how will I, how will I basically, you know, uh, do my lifts 
you know, how, how, how can I uh, basically write my list? How can I track my progress? I literally just grabbed a little notebook this big and just a little pen and I write it there. And you may say that, well, isn't it kind of weird? You, yeah, like people look at me kind of weird, I, I guess. Like people even ask me like, for what? And some people reacted positively, some people reacted like kind of weird, but who gives a shit? Like I have absolute and total focus in the gym. I'm present in the gym. And I'm actually experimenting more, more like with mindfulness. I'm reading this really great book on mindfulness. And I've been watching podcasts about mindfulness. I've been really trying to integrate mindfulness as much as I can in, in my day-to-day -day life and really trying to cut out all the technology, all the dopamine stuff. And uh, I'm doing that because I will actually, I will actually upload something about mindfulness in the future after I practice it a little bit more and after I gain more knowledge, but that's just like a side note. But Getting in the flow state at the gym is so important. And the second thing that I've been implementing is wearing either a hoodie or like a vest in the gym. Basically something kind of warm. I know it's summer. I know it's it was like 37 degrees just two days ago here in Croatia. But I've been working out in a hoodie for the last two weeks. What, what I can say the benefits are you get sweaty in literally the first two minutes of working out. You warm up pretty quickly. Your muscles feel, feel more, I don't know how to say it. When you go to the gym and you're kind of stiff, aren't you? You're kind of stiff. You don't feel good in your first lift. You know, you really have to push hard on your first lifts to really get, get the sweat going. Maybe you don't even sweat. Like I'm a person who, if, if I'm in, you know, only a t-shirt. I don't really sweat that much. But now with this intensity, with a proper warm-up and with a hoodie on, maybe even some pants, I'm I'm like warmed up so much. I warm up so much quicker and I'm just ready to hit the first set like a maniac. Yeah, you get some looks here, you get some questions again, the same thing with the notebook. Everyone looks at me weird because I'm I'm drinking water from a glass bottle. I'm <laughs> tracking my lifts in a notebook and I'm wearing a hoodie while it's 37 degrees. I look like an idiot. But I tell you that in the last two weeks, I've been getting insane pumps. I've been, I've been getting, those are the best workouts that I had in my entire life in the last two weeks. You don't have to listen to me. But if a man is telling you that in the last two years of going to the gym that I've had the best workouts in the last two weeks, and I made the most progress in the last two weeks, you better listen. You better listen. Hoodie, no phone, and really trying to like minimize the social interactions. I don't know, it sounds kind of bad, but trying to minimize social interactions just for the benefit of me growing in the gym is a good ROI. I believe before it was like it was kind of 50 50 like i would want to go to the gym really have fun spend three hours there speak to everyone make friends all that stuff now it's like more like okay let me go to the gym one hour let's do the workout let's you know pump up go to go home shower that's it and i think it's much better for the gains so with with that you basically achieve that mindfulness and if you carry that mindfulness throughout the whole workout you get the better mind muscle connection and when i said about the, the chest you, know, you flex all the way up it's there's just mind muscle connection you you do the curl on your bicep and you feel the burn you want to feel that burn that's my muscle connection that's mindfulness there's zero thoughts in your mind when you're at the top you know, when you push the bar to the top and it really hurts your bicep, there, there are zero thoughts in your mind. Absolutely zero. So you practice mindfulness, even when you're working out, you're practicing basically bodybuilding or weightlifting, whatever you want to call it. And you practice mindfulness. That's insane if you really think about it. And then between sets, you don't have something to distract you. You don't have a news basically to distract you. What I was doing with this basically... 
every single time when I was working out, when, when I just started working out, just, you know, basically January 2022, was just, you know, I would work out, I'll do all that stuff, a few months in, I'm working out, I'm texting the girl that I'm that I'm seeing, you know, I'm obsessing over her, I'm testing the group chat, you know, I'm texting if someone can, you know, send me their homework, so many distractions, and I'm not even present, and boom, 45 minutes has gone by, and I'm only done two exercises, bro, that's my stomach growling, that's, that's shit, that's shit workout, you can do more, you have to do more, you have to do it in a better quality, and I know I'm, I'm, I'm basically ranting right now, it's my first video after 10, like kind of 10 days, so forgive me, but I believe if you really take this advice seriously, it will help you in such a good way, you will make so many gains, and it will just be better, and I noticed that every six months, you, you learn something new, you implement something new. Yeah, it can be things like, uh, I'm not taking cold showers after my workouts. So I'm only taking cold showers and cold plunges on my rest days. Why? Uh, basically, if you take a uh, cold shower after a workout, you reduce the inflammation that you just cause by working out. So basically, counter-react the muscle growth. It may be... It, it, it's maybe... <clears throat> That's serious and that's significant, but it, 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 if I'm trying to gather all the percentage of the growth of my muscle, I'm, I'm, I'm doing that. Like, I, don't, I will not shower with cold water after a workout just because it will reduce the inflammation that, I, that, it, that basically the exercise caused. Simple thing. Second thing, no, no stretching before... Uh, after and before working out like proper proper stretching it really doesn't make sense like you just you know outworked your muscle and now you're just oh let me just stretch it a little bit like i was doing that for like two or three years now it doesn't really matter it's good if you like stretch after running maybe and after doing some cardio i don't really know the science behind that but i've not always noticed that i felt better when i stretched uh after running or doing any type of cardio uh what i wanted to say again okay no stretching no cold and a proper proper warm-up i went to physio because i didn't know why my deadlift was kind of weird why did i why did my right hand pull better than my left hand and we came to a simple conclusion that basically the reason why my back hurts is because my hamstring actually isn't working properly. My left hamstring was kind of lacking. And then the physio activated my hamstring and then it worked properly. So right now I do two, three, four, uh, four exercises for my core and my hamstring, just like a light exercises for like five sets and you hold it in each position for like five seconds. That's it. And then you jump into like real workout. It really helps you, helps you like get the momentum going. You need momentum in everything in life, so why not use it in working out and getting better and better results? It's a win-win. So yeah, I really believe if you take this approach to training, which is kind of minimalistic, but animalistic because you're literally training like an animal, you will see the most progress. Now, if there is one thing again that I just wanted to say at the end of this video is that you need to experiment. Do not ask me for perfect training routine. Even now, right now, I'm telling you kind of my current perfect training routine. And it may not be the perfect training routine in the next six months. So the thing is, you will learn and grow as you get older, as you get more experience in the gym, and you will see what works the best for you. It may be powerlifting. It may be classic bodybuilding. It may be doing more hypertrophy. It may be training for more endurance even. You know, doing 20 reps per set instead of 6 to 8. You will see what works the best for you and you will adapt to that situation and that circumstance. I can only tell you what works for me best and I can tell you to try it. And I really believe 
this is the next thing that will be very, very huge is to lowering the sets, lowering the reps, lowering the amount of time you go to the gym and just focusing on the intensity. If you say it doesn't work, you're basically saying that science doesn't work. Not, not even science, you're basically like human biology, that intensity and stress and damaging the muscle doesn't cause the muscle to grow. You need more rest and not more sets. That's it. Be hydrated, be well fed, be basically focused and you will see insane amount of progress. So yeah, I will quit ranting. The video is 26, to 26 minutes long anyway. So yeah, but I just wanted to share this because I believe it's such an important information because I've been only training two weeks and I've seen an enormous amount of progress. And I believe if you want to bulk up this winter, you want to even start it right now, I believe you should maybe use this approach. And I will speak about this approach more in depth and the exercise that I have and the moments that I do, everything in depth one day. And that will come pretty, pretty soon. So yeah, after a pretty long time, keep working hard and I'm proud of you.